Hello, I'm Dr. Sherry, your onboard storyteller. I'm sitting at home in dry dock writing ever more stories to tell you when we're back on ship. And I was delighted when the folks at Oceana asked me if I would share with you one of my favorite ports, a place I can't wait to be back at when we're all at sea together. And I thought of Singapore. in my closet of all my many coats and I found an appropriate garden party coat and I want to chat with you for a moment about the gardens in Singapore, beautiful places that we will look forward to seeing again. It is one of the youngest countries on the planet created overnight in an act of the Malaysian legislature to separate Singapore from the rest of Malaysia. And as we start our little story into Singapore, we're going down the river in a recast Chinese junk as we pass by the dock high-rise buildings today, but it's where Malay people first came ashore in this what would become Singapore. Singapore grew into what it is today from a third world to a first world country in warp speed. Really the work of its first governing group led by Lee Kuan Yew. And that's a story in itself, which I will tell when we're back on ship. But for today, I just want to leisurely wander around this port with you. This was the 19th century vision of Sir Raffles. And we'll see some of the interior green space that was a cricket field. Now it's bordered by the museums and the Justice Building and some of the other high-rise iconic structures. is a Christian, Muslim, and Buddhist city. It's as if uh, Confucius met Adam Smith in this little dot of real estate and it blossomed into a garden of high-rise architecture that still kept its green spaces. The gardens are precious, both interior and exterior gardens. And we see some of this iconic architecture when we see the, the three-tier hotel at the Inner Harbor with its swimming pool at the top. This is one of my favorite swimming pools in the entire world. You pay about $25 just to take an elevator ride up to the top of the hotel. And then you can redeem that $25 spent on cocktails or food as you look around the bay and you'll see the tops of the gardens. Singapore has interior gardens so that those of you who are concerned about all this tropical heat can leisurely wander through beautiful, beautiful gardens, a cloud forest of gardens. You'll wander through gardens that are dedicated to different places in the world, like a little British garden or the Australian garden or the, or the Chinese garden that's lined with its red lacquer arches as you walk through and just enjoy the beauty around you. It's set in an absolutely perfect space. And if you're adventurous, you'll climb into the interior cloud forest mountain and walk out on the catwalk around and see all of the orchids and the flowers and the great vistas. And then when you come out of the interior space, you'll come into the, the giant tree forest. These are what have now become iconic 
Singapore trees, these man-made trees that, that sort of grow now organically in their space. And we can walk out on a catwalk and walk at a very high altitude through the treetops and observe all of the gardens around us. It's a beautiful place to spend the day. And as we walk from the gardens of the bay back toward our ship, we're, we're looking back at the vista that's created by the air-conditioned space of the interior gardens, by the swimming pool at the top of the hotel, and by the open air gardens of the trees. And then we'll see the little statue. It's a, it's a sculpture called Planet by a Brit by the name of Mark Quinn. It's like an infant that's seemingly floating in space in the garden. The humans on this bit of the planet, so full of greenery in such a small place. These are the gardens of Singapore, and this is what we'll see when we're back together again at sea. I can't wait for that. There are so many ports and so many stories to share. Until we'll, uh, we are all back again at sea, be well.